Now, the federal government has disbursed over 438 billion naira to 34 states and the federal capital territory under the Nigeria Community Action for Resilience and Economic Stimulus (NG Cares) program. According to Malam Suleiman Odapu, the Information and Communication Officer of the Federal Cares Support Unit. Now, in a press statement, Odapu explains that the disbursements were determined by the result achieved by the state and the FCT during the third independent verification agency assessment conducted in January 2024. Now, this substantial reimbursement aims to bolster state governments and the FCT in mitigating the multifaceted challenges of poverty and enhancing the livelihoods of the most vulnerable population. These payouts represent just some of government's palliative measures to cushion the effect of hardship. Now, Mustafa Ewinla, a public affairs analyst, is joining me now to discuss more on these issues. Welcome, Mustafa. CBN, not surprisingly, uh, increased the interest rate again by 50 basis points. Did that come to you as a surprise? So, again, uh, it is very, very disappointing mm -hmm. that uh, this conversation about our interest rates yeah. is coming up again just after two months that we had our last discussion on this issue. Yes. Sometimes in May, our uh, interest rate was reviewed by 150 basis points. Mm -hmm. It was, at that point, it was 24%. It was increased to 26.25% mm -hmm. barely two months ago. So it is very, very disheartening that barely two months after, mm -hmm. the CBN governor, Mr. Uh, Cardoso, is coming up with another new interest rate to about 26.75, which is about 50, 50 basis points, about 0.5%. Mm -hmm. So my, and their, you know, excuse for doing that is that they want to mitigate against inflation. According to statistics, you cannot mitigate, you cannot increase the interest rates to mitigate against inflation every other month. Mm -hmm. Before it takes full effect, yes, Increasing the interest rates will curb inflation. It will reduce the prices of you know, the demand for goods and services. But before it takes full effect, it takes 12 to 18 months before it takes full effect on the economy. It doesn't happen in two months. Yes. So your reasons for increasing the interest rate in May is not even justified yet for you to even come back and increase it just two months after. Right. The interest rates in the UK has been 5.25% in the last 10 years. It hasn't been reviewed. Same as America. So why are we coming up with, why do we think that increasing the interest rate every other month is the only way to curb inflation? Now, the ripple effect of doing this is not far-fetched. We will continue to frustrate manufacturers. We will continue to make life difficult for people who are helping us to salvage a lot of situations in our manufacturing industry. People will go to, to banks to get loans to fund businesses. Look at what Dangote is going through. Dangote, Dangote's refinery is worth close to 20 billion US dollars. This man in the past two weeks has been on the news lamenting about the hardship and the frustrations he's going through. Dangote's refinery put together, put together all our five refineries in the whole of Nigeria. That refinery is bigger than all of them. And this is somebody who is saying we cannot continue to just last month. Dangote was saying you cannot, a country who continues to increase the interest rates, mm. you will continue to frustrate people who have genuine intentions of improving this economy out of the country. Sure. Do you know how many just last just few months ago we, we were hearing about five major oil companies threatening to leave the system? But they've not been able to achieve that goal because of regulatory hurdles. But there are five major oil companies that you can think of. Just last month, Microsoft is saying they're shutting down business. Just how many months ago, GSK is also saying they're leaving. How many years ago, Dunlop was in Nigeria, how many years ago? Manufacturers are tired. They left from all these issues. You, so now, the way forward, you see, if we are not careful, our monetary policy committee, if, the, if care is not taken, they are going to push investors out of this country yeah. and even in genuine investors who wish to come and invest will see no reason to come. And all this is really happening. So 
our intra, our inflation rate as of last month was about 34.1%. Okay. Two months ago, our inflation rate was about 26%. Earlier last month, it was about 30%. So it, our inflation rate is, at, is, 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 is right now on a surge. Yeah. And I think that CBN, the Monetary Policy Committee, they need to do better than this. All right, because every other um, time they meet, or most every other two months they meet, uh, yes. they, they're always targeting, the, the, of course, the Monetary Policy Committee always targets uh, the interest rate. But then, Cardoso, if we try to listen to what he said, because I'm not seeing that the effect, specifically he said that uh, uh, he cited recent economic factors such as high inflation and the need, uh, that's what I'm going to, the need to stabilize the foreign exchange market as the rationale. Looking at things in the past few months, how do you see the forex market has it been stabilized over time? So the forex, the forex market for me in the past few months is not as stabilized as, as they are plan, as they are you know proposing for it to be. Oh. So look at the rate of dollar. Dollar also has been you know back and forth. It's been yeah. one thousand five hundred at some point. It's been coming back and forth. The cost of importing goods and services is also not stable. Yeah. Those who are in the import business are also are lamenting on the high cost of import duties, are, are, are lamenting on the cost of you know, bringing goods and services into the country and out of the country. It's not even stable. The price you get for this month is definitely going to be different from the price you get last month. Yeah. You see, as a country, I can tell you for a fact, you will see what the vice president said just a few days ago, I think yesterday at the forum, that the country has generated 300,000 businesses in the last one year. Oh. He also added that the country has generated 1 million jobs in the last one year. But what Vice President Kashim Shetima is failing to tell us is what are the other businesses that has folded up in the last one year? I'm sure it's over 1,000 businesses. Oh. Do you know how many businesses cannot even pay salaries of workers? Do you know how many businesses cannot even run their business effectively because there is no fund and the bank and going to the bank to get loans is difficult? Yeah. Now we're talking about 26.75%. Yeah. That's the benchmark interest rate. Go to the banks, you get as high as 30%. I think we need to go back to our drawing board. Okay. The countries who have single digit interest rates, what are they doing? How are they able to achieve that? Yeah. We need to, we need to, we need to go back to the drawing board and follow their templates. Okay. Yes, we live in a peculiar country. Our, our economic system is different. The people yeah. is different. We have diverse opinions. We're, but then we can do better than this. Right. Now the youths are saying they want to protest. They want to protest. The government is saying don't protest. But if care is not taken, we're going to push the youth to the, to the, I mean, to the wall. Yeah. And we know what that, I mean, we know what that will lead to eventually. Right. There's hardship in the land. According to um, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, yeah. in the last one year, the prices of food items oh. has risen with about 250%. Yes, the prices of beans, rice, yam, everything has, has increased with about 250% in just one year. Oh. I know that sometimes this year, rice was sold for about 80,000 naira per bag. Oh. How, will, how, will, how will a common man so live in this kind of hardship? A minimum wage of 70,000 naira. I was going to ask that because that's part of what I've outlined for us to talk about. If you look at it now, you say you just said rightly that uh, the prices of staples are increased by two hundred and fifty percent. That's yeah. more than twice the price you know since last year, and it comes in the wake of uh, where uh, the federal government is even um, planning to impose some staples. Where does that really leave us? We are talking about getting foreign exchange, yet we are trying to even um, you know uh, we are still so we are still struggling to even feed our own nation. So again, a country who really wants good for his country. I mean, the leaders, those, all our stakeholders, the professionals, particularly our president, needs to really come to our, you know, head as we speak right now. Just yesterday, a few days ago, minimum wage was increased. Yeah. But the minimum wage, even that was increased, if you look at it, it still does not take us anywhere. $70,000, so, $44. So we're thinking of, so in, in Nigeria, we take, I think most of the things we do is, we take one step forward and we're taking 10 steps backward. We are retrogressing in terms of the policies we are churning out. Mm. If we don't get it right with our CB, with our interest rates, we are going to lose it totally. Our, our, our economy is going to lose dying. Mm. We, are not, we, are not, we cannot continue to come every other month with increased interest rates. The hardship in the land is serious. Market women, so inflation now, if you really, really want to see one of the issues we have with Increases the interest rates. Yeah. You want to curb against inflation. 
Yeah. But our trade unions, our market women, a lot of a lot of them go through different you know processes of getting their food items. They they pay different amounts in terms of cost and transportation. True. How do you want to have a direct influence on them in terms of stabilizing the, the prices of food items? Yeah. Yes, they have trade union. You have association of tomato seller. You have association of um. And they get child multiple taxation. They get they get so. If you are not careful, those market women selling those food items will have nothing to sell again because they will have no funds to even buy anything. That's why, that's why just last week I even took my time to say, let me even go to the market and do some shopping for the house for my wife. Mm. To buy tomato and pepper was a big problem. I, if I what I go home, my wife was even asking me, how much did you buy? I, I told her 20,000. It was not even up, up to maybe, it was just nothing to write home about. Mm. So it tells us that. So what is the fate of an average Nigerian, a common man on the street who does not even know where the next meal is coming from? So, and this is the root cause of insecurity. Mm. This is the root cause of most of our social, economic, social problems in terms of you know, we're, we're improving poverty. We're not thinking of taking average Nigerian out of that poverty line. Mm. If you look at the list of 10, 10, poorest countries in the world that is that, that that is difficult to live in. Nigeria is on that list. Yeah. And we keep churning our policies to make life harder for Nigerians. So so for me, I think that the Monetary Policy Committee needs to go back to drawing board. So going back they, to drawing board, so what exactly should they be doing? Because right now, over time, they have been stuck, like someone like an analyst would say, they've been using the textbook approach, uh, you know, what they see happen in other economic clients, but that does not really work here in Nigeria. What should they be doing right now? Because they are seemingly doing the same set of thing every other time they meet, and yet the economy seems to be getting worse. So I think they need to seek expert opinion on um, certain certain of certain policies that are turning out before even thinking about it. I don't think that proper consultations was done before this new CBN rate of 26.75. I mean, we have professionals. I mean, you cannot always depend on those in your inner circle to formulate these policies. If you look at, if you look at a lot of statistics that are in the public space, yeah. you will see that increasing the interest rate ultimately is not the only way to curb inflation. Yeah. So the other sectors of the country can also think of, okay, what do we even do to industrialize Nigeria? What do we even do to make jobs available to Nigerians what do we, to create jobs mm. now we are thinking of increasing interest rates which we have done already so the little manufacturers we have a manufacturer already who is already stressed out already this same manufacturer will build roads to his factory this same manufacturer will generate his own power this same manufacturer will build you you know will generate his own water supply and you already and again you are coming again to give him stringent conditions in terms of how to borrow from banks. Mm. A lot of money, a lot of industries already, like I said, are already thinking of shutting down because mm. the cost of running business in this country is, is outrageous. Mm. And a average, a average manufacturer who is a, you know, a rookie in the business, who is just trying to say, okay, let me even start to manufacture, say pure water, for example. I know a pure water factory who started last year somewhere in Badagri and is already thinking of winding off. Mm. I mean, you know, shutting down already. Just last year, a brand new, with a factory. So these are issues. So how do we make give these people an enabling environment so that so if the cost of production is re relatively low, mm. then the cost of I mean the sales price also will be low. low. But if a manufacturer is is producing this phone, for example, for hundred thousand naira, he would definitely want to make profit. It was, so it's going to sell like one fifty, one thirty thousand naira because he has also you know, invested and he wants to make profit. Mm. But so a manufacturer will not make a phone for 100,000 naira and sell less than 100 naira. Mm. That's not that, that's not the way to do business. So, mm. but then, so, and if people can, if purchasing power is reducing, if customers are not buying, so what's the use of even, uh, you know, running the factory? Somebody has manufactured 20 items. is mm. not able to sell even one in, in two weeks because of the cost, the, 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 the Cost prices, I nobody can afford it. Okay. So that means what you are telling that man is to shut down. Yeah. And that's my biggest fear. So if we have somebody as big as Dangote complaining, what is the fate of smaller manufacturing industries? Yeah. Dangote has just invested 20 billion on this refinery. Yeah. He's already lamenting, people are already saying all sorts, saying that he's doing this, he's doing that, right. he's, he's promoting monopoly. And this man is saying, no, yeah. I'm doing what. The whole, of the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole country could not do. 
All right. So, I mean, it needs to be encouraged. Okay, last word now as we round off because we're out of time. Just very last word now. So, what should uh, manufacturers or small businesses uh, who depend on co um, funding from the banks or from uh, maybe microfinance um, institutions, what should they be doing to mitigate um, costs? Because as it is right now, they still have to survive somehow for those who want to still remain um, or who want to still remain in business very quickly. So it's difficult, to, it's difficult for those manufacturers to do anything to mitigate against cost, cost mm. of production. Because a lot of these people depend on bank loans to run their business. Mm. So, if, so if CBN is not thinking of something more holistic to do, yes. these people will, con they will continue to chase people out of business. And at the end of the day, there's going to be a lot of problems in Nigeria. Mm. There's, there's going to be joblessness. There's going to be problems. There's going to be anarchy. So something has to be done. I mean, so I think that rises and falls on the CBN. All I right. think that the president of this country, uh, Mr. Bola Metinubu, needs to intervene. All right. We can't, we can't, we can't leave it in, in this kind of condition. We cannot. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mustafa, for your thought and your inputs this morning. Thank you so much for being here. All you. right. My guest has been Mustafa Ewenla, uh, estate survey and, of course, a public affairs analyst. And we have been looking at the monetary policy, uh, the fallout of, of the monetary policy committee meeting. Uh, CBN raised the interest rate by uh, to about 26.75%. That's the science of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadunyo. Many thanks for being there.